Good morning. Today is the $1,000 rebuy tournament. Hopefully it doesn't end up being a $10,000 tournament for me. I'm not the type who goes off and loses lots of buy-ins. That's typically not how I roll. I'm just gonna go play good solid poker. I don't know how long the rebuy period is, but I imagine it's going to be quite a long time. And maybe at the end of the rebuy period, you can buy in rather short. That said, if you remember what I said in the previous part of this video blog, I, if you final table this, it loses a lot of equity if you play the other tournaments and final table them. So that's going to probably make me less inclined to rebuy with a sh relatively shallow stack late in the tournament, but we'll see. Well, my short stack skills did not prevail in the $1,000 buy-in turbo tournament, but that's A-OK. -okay. Turbo tournaments are tough. I came outside to see what they were doing in terms of um, work. They're actually doing a ton. Take a look. I think you can see. Maybe you can see. Eh. You can't really see. That's where the poker room used to be. Now it's completely gone. Here's Hard Rock Live behind us where they used to play World Poker Tour events, that purple building. Uh, it seems like you can't get back there anymore. So, I guess we're staying inside the main casino this time. Um, all in all, the tournament today was lackluster. <laughs> I didn't really have many hands, and I didn't win many hands, but that's A-OK. -okay. Tomorrow is a $1,000 tournament, and actually there's a bit of a dilemma because the way they have this set up is they play four final tables on the same day. They have a 1K tomorrow, and if you final table the 1K, you actually it's a one-day, a two-day tournament, so they play the final table on the same day as all the other final tables. And what ends up happening though is that tomorrow is basically day one of a two-day tournament. So if you final table, you don't play again for five days, which in theory means you should not play again for the next five days, which is kind of silly to come out to Florida and then skip a 5K and a 2,500 and 25K, right? It just doesn't make sense. So I guess this is one of these spots where if you final table the 1k you just realize you're giving away a bit of equity when you do it because you should still probably play the 2500 5k and 25k all those final tables play on the same day but on the other tournaments the 5k is i think a four-day event the 2500 is a three-day event and the 25k is a two-day event so all those line up nicely where the final tables naturally would be on the same day but the 1k is a weird outlier and i'm going to try to final table it but if i don't it's not the end of the world <laughs> It's, never, it's always a weird thing thinking, if I final table this, I know I'm gonna have to give up some equity if I final table another one. But then again, like how often do you actually final table two tournaments? I mean, if you're, let's say, one in 50 to final table each of them, clearly to final table two, you're just not in very good shape. So anyway, tomorrow's a 1K re-entry. I'm gonna go do my best. I'm gonna wake up early, go to the gym, try to find something healthy to eat. I brought some blended super green mix, which I think is what's gonna end up happening. And, um, after that, we'll keep on grinding. Good morning. Today is the $1,000 rebuy tournament. Hopefully it doesn't end up being a $10,000 tournament for me. I'm not the type who goes off and loses lots of buy-ins. That's typically not how I roll. I'm just gonna go play good solid poker. I don't know how long the rebuy period is, but I imagine it's going to be quite a long time. And maybe at the end of the rebuy period, you can buy in rather short. That said, if you remember what I said in the previous part of this video blog, I, if you final table this, it loses a lot of equity if you play the other tournaments and final table them. So that's going to probably make me less inclined to rebuy with a sh relatively shallow stack late in the tournament, but we'll see. I want to show you the construction yard behind me. I mentioned they were doing a lot of work in my room right now, but this is what my view is. I don't know what they're building, but as you can see, looks like they're building some gigantic building behind me. My wife asked if I ever have a good view at hotels, and basically the answer is no. I don't know how it works, but I always get views of this. So anyway, today's the thousand dollar tournament. I'm gonna go do my best. Here we are on the 1K. Lots of people, 500 or so. I've already busted once. It has not been fun. Good morning, everyone. Today is the $5,000 main event at the Hard Rock. And these are the kind of things that go through my head in the morning. I woke up a little bit late. I decided, eh, last time I'm not gonna go to the gym. I got a little workout in yesterday. So 
I woke up at 10.15, we play at 11. I think we play at 11. We may play at noon, but I think we play at 11. Um, then I was thinking, okay, do I really need to bring anything? I'm like, ah, oh, no, I don't need to take anything down. I don't need a backpack. Then I got to thinking, it's gonna be a long day, so don't be lazy. So I have my World Poker Tour Tournament of Champions backpack, and I was thinking, okay, what do I actually need? Do I really need my notepad? Huh? Huh? I've been taking notes using an application, share my pair online, so I haven't really been using notes recently, but ah, eh, don't be lazy. Do I really need sunglasses? World Poker Tour gave us some fun Maui Gym sunglasses last time. I haven't worn sunglasses in quite a while at the poker table, probably, gosh, six months or a year. It only really occurs whenever I'm playing against some sicko like Phil Ivy or something. But, eh, don't be lazy. Then, what else do we have? We have some water. It's my wife's law firm. Um, have a canister of water because here they give you little, little water bottles. Then I have a big thing of green tea from David's Tea. This is full of oolong tea at the moment. And I will drink that throughout the day and I will refill it. What else do we have? That's almost it. We have an iPad for dinner break in case I decide to be antisocial and read something on my iPad or watch a video instead. So, all these things I actually don't need, which is kind of funny if you think about it because, I mean, like the last two tournaments I played, I didn't have a backpack with me, I didn't need it. But, eh. Is it really that hard to carry on a backpack? Don't be lazy. That said, there is something really cool and, um, I don't know, intriguing, I don't know, about the ability to just go downstairs with nothing, play poker all day, and win a pile of money. You don't even need anything. And in theory, you don't need anything. But I'm gonna be responsible and prepared. Other things people may need, um, some people take a jacket. I don't need a jacket. I'm pretty much immune to the cold from taking lots of cold showers. Um, I do take some flossers, which are little floss things in case you get crap stuck in your teeth. That's important. What else do we have? I have other tea packets, but I don't really need those here. Um, but I think that's pretty much it. Some people take a phone charger. I don't really plan on being on my phone. I definitely think you should strive to not be on your phone. Although I do understand that some people listen to music and some of these music apps run on Wi-Fi and that burns a lot of data, or a lot of um, power. So sometimes people need that. Anyway, today's the $5,000 buy-in. It, you can re-enter one time, so I think it only makes sense. It, it's a two-day tournament, okay? Well, two-day two day one tournament. So if you buy in today and bust, you can play again tomorrow. Or if you buy in today and bust, you can play again today, but if you bust then, you can't play tomorrow. Or you can just buy in on day 1B, and if you bust, you can play again then. So you have a few options, but I think the obvious strategy is to play day 1A, and if you bust, play day 1B. So that's the plan. I can't really foresee any real world where I rebuy again today, but Maybe it would happen, I don't even know. I'd have to like look around the field and see every seat be a super soft seat when I bust it. And then that, that may induce me to play again. But um, usually day one B is the softer of the days anyway. Tomorrow is Saturday, so obviously tomorrow is gonna be much softer than today. There may be some merit in thinking I'm gonna play on day one B only, and then if I bust, I'm gonna rebuy again on day one B because day one B should be softer. Because all the pros play day one A, and some of them make it through to day one B, right? Or to, to day two. But a lot of locals, only have Saturday off, right? They don't have Friday off because everyone works on Friday. So they just all play on Saturday. Maybe I'm getting my days confused. Um, so all the amateurs play Saturday, or a lot of amateurs only play Saturday, therefore that day should be softer. But I still think there's just merit in having a full day worth of play, which is why I'm playing today, and I'm gonna play tomorrow if necessary. But hopefully, it's just not necessary. Here we are. We just got started. So this guy didn't know where he was sitting. Okay. You, and you play he's only hands. played two hands. Now this guy's going to take a seat instead. That's better. We don't need to stand here. Alright. Right, go ahead. Hey, wait a second. Do those last hands count that he wasn't supposed to play? Yes, it still does. They shouldn't make Exactly. I want my chips back too, please. Alright. Awesome. That answer I'll do a full. So early. Yeah. It's not like I just play. Froz Jocker, there he is. You don't want to play with Froz Jocker, take all your money. Before we move forward today, playing with Faraz is always an absolute treat, here he is. Playing with Joseph is always an absolute treat, here he is. Playing with Jonathan Jaffe, always an absolute treat. He's already doubled up with 6'3 suited, there he is. He bluffed me also. It's a lot of fun. Is that too R rated? 
I'm so happy to be here. Well, I busted day 1A of the $5,000 tournament. It was a pretty rough day for me. Um, Jonathan Jaffe was playing lots of hands and making lots of flushes, so that was a lot of fun. He had about three and a half starting stacks when I left. Um, anyway, I had aces. I had aces lose to a gut shot straight that I paid when he got there on the turn versus a short stack, so that's obviously fine. And then my bust out hand was kind of interesting. Un uh, third position limped, cutoff limped. I limped with a 40 big blind stack with 10 aided diamonds on the button. Small blind, uh, generally a little bit too overvalued, I think. For example, earlier I raised under the gun, he threw bet me with ace queen in second position, which a lot of people don't do that. Anyway, um, he made it 3,200, so eight big blinds at 200, 400. First limper folds, second limper, who's also, I think, a bit too splashy, calls. And I decided to call off of my 16,000 stack, which is aggressive, but I think it's fine. It's close, probably just a fold, but it's, I think it's fine enough. Flop comes eight, four, two, two clubs. I have 10, eight of diamonds. Initial pre-flop razor bets 3,000, 3,000, 3,200, something like that. Next guy in the cutoff makes it 7,500, and I would be all in for 10,000 here. <clears throat> Maybe 11,000, something like that. So a little bit more. And I almost just folded there. The problem is on 10, I'm sorry, on 8, 4, 2, 2 clubs, what should you be raising there? It's not a lot, right? You shouldn't raise over pairs, because clearly the small blanket just have aces, right? So I think most of the opponent's raising range is going to be sets, which I blocked with my 10-8. And um, one pair hands, like maybe 8-7, maybe stuff like 5-4, and then flush draws. So I think against that range, I'm actually fine. I'm still worried about the initial betters range. I almost folded, but I decided to put it in. Probably, I don't know what I'm supposed to do there. I'm probably supposed to fold pre-flop is what I'm supposed to do. Anyway, um... Both players call, so now I know I'm screwed. Turns an eight of clubs, so I have trips now, which I'm actually liking. Um, small blind checks, other guy bets, other, other guy pulls. Now we're heads up, and I mean, I'm drawing, right? Clearly I'm drawing, even though I made trips. He had pocket fours for a set, and I didn't even know if he would raise with a set on the flop, because on eight, four, two, your opponent's like never folding aces if you just call. Whereas whenever you raise, now all of a sudden you let him be able to get off the hook if he calls and turns scary like it was. So I don't know what the opponent folded, but he probably folded no repair. Anyway, I'm out. I, um, I'm generally happy with my play today. The last hand, I was a little bit splashy, but it is a re-entry tournament, and I was already getting kind of short. Not that that justifies giving it away. I don't think I gave it away, but it certainly does justify splashy play to some extent. Also, I didn't have a very good table to where uh, I was happy just sitting there grinding it out all day. So... We'll play again tomorrow. Hopefully we get a better table. As I mentioned earlier, day 1B is often much softer than day 1A. So hopefully that happens. Uh, instead of having a table with like $30 million in caches, maybe I can get one tomorrow with about, well, only mine. So I'm going to hang out for the rest of the day and try to take it easy. Good morning. Today is day 1B of the $5,000 Seminole Hard Rock Poker Open main event. And I don't really have much to say because yesterday I busted, I came to my room, read some books, watched some poker videos, and I went to bed. But I just had to do this. Iron my shirt because it was wrinkled. And I certainly don't want to sound preachy or anything, but there is a lot of value in presenting yourself in a at least somewhat put together manner. And if you want good things in life, quite often that comes from working with other people and being presentable and um, looking as if people can come up and talk to you because you don't look disheveled. And I think a lot of poker players, or I mean, don't take it the wrong way, but like nerdy people in general, they don't really care about appearance. I mean, I know many, many times in the past, I've gone downstairs looking like I just rolled out of bed and my shirts were wrinkled and like one time I was so tired I went down with like a backwards shirt on or something. That's just not good, right? And if you want to be presentable 
and have good things in your life, try to look at least somewhat put together. Now, you could take this very far, right? I mean, you could say wearing a t-shirt is unacceptable because professionals don't wear t-shirts, professionals wear dress shirts, which, you know, if you told me I could wear a dress shirt every day, that'd probably be slightly better than a t-shirt. That said, that's much more difficult for traveling. So, I'm a big fan of looking your best so that people will think you are approachable. And if people think you're approachable, they will come talk to you. Because I do think that most people who listen to my video blog here are not the, like, the, the hater crowd, right? There, there, is, there are a few video blogs on YouTube and on, on the internet where people like to hate on other people. And that's not what we do here. Here we try to work together and make things happen. As you can see, my book, Excelling at No Limit Hold'em, that only came about because I presented myself in a way that said I could get the job done. Of course, I got the job done, but probably six or eight of the authors out of the 17 said they had no intention of doing a poker book, but they would only do it because it was me and I had a track record of being able to write good poker books and also finishing jobs that I start. Because a lot of people in all industries like to have a lot of talk. They like to say they're gonna do things and they never do it. So the image you put out is important, especially, well, the, the things you actually do are most important, but the image you have is also relatively important. So iron your shirts, it takes two minutes. If your pants are wrinkled, iron your pants too. And it probably doesn't matter, but that one time it matters, it could be very important. Now I'm gonna go play poker. <laughs>Just picky. Sometimes you show up to a poker table and it's covered in stuff. So what you do, you take a room key or any other card and you kind of sweep it. Let's see, you sweep like so and put it right under the rail. So you end up doing like this, you sweep about 300 times in about a two minute period and then you'll end up with a nice clean workspace for the day. Although you gotta have a lot of pressure on it because there's a lot of crap on this thing. You have to observe because you don't want to get a disease and die. <laughs> Here's the finished result, as you can see. Still kind of dirty. We, could, we can get a little bit more right here. But relatively clean. If you look over here, this is what we started like, as you can see. Oh, wow. You can really tell this one. If you look over here, Not perfect, but it's better than nothing. Here we are, about to start day 1B. $5,000 tournament, which is always nice. My table started off great. On the fourth hand of the day, I got it all in with aces, an ace and an ace. My opponent had jacks, which was probably a little bit too light against someone like myself who's only getting it in with aces. And I won, so that was sweet. A little while later, I got pretty lucky. I flopped a set. I check-raised the flop. I had a pocket five that came king, six, five with a flush draw. Um, I check raise flop, turn was a four, so eight, seven gifts there, but whatever. I bet the turn my opponent called, river was another six, so now I'm really happy with my hand. Um, I shoved, my opponent called, he had eight, seven for the straight, so that was lucky. So that put me up to 90,000 after just um, an hour. <laughs> so pretty great first level. From there, I lost every hand. I had uh, jack of diamonds, 10 of clubs on a board of like ace of diamonds. 
um, go into my hotel room. Ace of diamonds, nine of diamonds, seven of clubs. So I continuation bet the flop, which was a little bit wide, but whatever. Um, into two people, one person called. Turn was an eight of diamonds, so I make a straight with a flush draw. I bet again. Oh, I'm sorry, I checked. He bet, I just called. River was a brick. I checked, he bet, I called, and he had a flush. So that was lucky I didn't lose a lot of money. A little while later against the same guy, I had king jack of clubs. He raised from middle position. I called, I think, small blind. And it came queen, eight, four, two clubs. I ch queen, six, four. I check called. I could have check raised there. I think check raised is fine. I decided to just call it. He bet small. Turn was a king, so now I have top pair. I checked, he bet, I called. River was another four. I checked, he bet, and I paid. And he had ace king, so that was a little bit unlucky because I just win the hand if you know, I don't improve, and if I do improve, I win the hand. So I did not want exactly a king, and I got a king. So that put me back down to like 30,000. So I ended up losing two pots once the blinds got high. It's fun because I won two. Like 200 big blind pots in the first hour, and then I lost two like 40 big blind pots later, and it took all my money. Um, from there, I don't really know what happened the last few levels. I got it all with queens against ace jack on jack 6 4, so that was good. It put me back up to 60, and then I just won some pots towards the end of the day. So it was a, it's an interesting day where I made a lot of, well, I say a lot, like five or six pretty good hands, and I won half of them and I lost half of them. But um, anyway, I made day two at 99,900, which is a great stack. Well, I say it's a great stack. It's probably, average is probably about 75,000 or so. So um, I'm gonna get some rest. We resume tomorrow at noon, and that's that. Here we are, about to start day two. There's Ari Engel, best player in the world. He is, he runs well, and, and plays well too. <laughs> Here's where we live today. We have the coffee. We just rolled out of bed. We're ready to go. Well, I just busted the $5,000 tournament, rather near the bubble. 130 people remained, and 111 got paid. It's not really where you want to bust. I raised the button with King Jacket Clubs to 10,000 to 2,000, 4,000 out of my 180K stack. Small blind folded. Doc Sands 3 bet to 34,000 from the big blind. And I've folded the three bets, I think, twice since he's been at the table. He has not three bet me yet, and uh, he generally three bets a lot, though, especially in these spots, I think. So I called. Seems like a pretty easy call. I could have shoved for um, 45 big blinds. That would have been a bit much, I think, nearing the bubble, but I think shove's okay, too. Um, flop comes ace of clubs, six of diamonds. Ace of diamonds, seven of clubs, six of diamonds. Ace, seven, six, two clubs. I have a flush draw, but not flush draw. He checks, and I decide to check behind. I thought if he, when he's checking here, he's gonna have a lot of very good hands that are just never folding. But he's also gonna have some hands like kings, queens, jacks, tens, nines, eights, that would probably fold to multiple barrels, but do I really wanna be barreling multiple times against someone who I think is probably good enough to check here with some top pairs and are just never folding? So I decided to check, just try to get the equity. Turn was a five, offsuit five, so now I just have the king high flush draw. He bet 50K, and I had about 150K behind. So I think calling's the only option. King and Jack could be good if he has some pocket nines. Um, I don't know if he's betting pocket nines there, but I decided to call. River was a seven of clubs, so it must have been a seven, six, not the seven of clubs. Um, he goes all in, and obviously I call because I have a flush. I only lose to aces, realistically. And um, he had aces, so I lost. And that's unfortunate. It's really annoying. <laughs> So I'm gonna go find some lunch. Then I'm going to hop into a $2,000 tournament, a $2,500 tournament, something like that. And we'll see how it goes. It's always frustrating to bubble in these spots. It's, it's actually a, uh, a little bit rough. The last big tournament I played here, I also bubbled. Um, it was the World Poker Tour Tournament of Champions. I made two pair against a better two pair in a, in a, in a pot. So it's not, I'm not a very good luck in Florida nearing the bubble. I guess I'll try to do better later. morning. Um, yesterday did not go well. I played the $2,000 tournament and I promptly lost at Pocket Aces against a player who's very known to be overly optimistic. You guys can't see this. They're doing work outside my building right now. 
with a giant crane. Um, anyway, what happened? I had aces. He, or I raised the button, he called big blind, it came king, eight, seven, two hearts. He checked, I bet, he called. Turn was a 10 of clubs, putting up two clubs. He decided to lead. This is where things always get dicey against good players, because you never know if they assume you're a calling station or if they assume you are a nit, or if they're just trying to be balanced and they're leading with some draws and some nut hands, like two pair, and random pocket tens, but probably not pocket tens. So anyway, I called. River was another 10, which should be a pretty good card, because I really only lose to the turned two pairs, which would be king 10, 10, seven, and 10, eight. Is that right? Yeah. So anyway, I called. He had 10, seven, so. That was been unlucky. After that, I was down. Well, the blinds went up kind of quickly because I fought in a little bit late because I busted the 5K. I then got ace four all in against king, queen, and I lost. I was a little bit depressed, a little bit dejected, came back to my room, hung out for a bit, took care of a little bit of work. I was laying up in the bathtub, relaxing, trying to prepare for the 25K today. And then a notification went off on my phone saying there's a $2,500 turbo satellite, which normally I don't play satellites because I'm not a big fan of sitting there for eight or 10 hours grinding it out. But I'll play a turbo. So I went down there, I registered, got seated, quickly realized this is not a turbo. It has 30 minute levels. We're gonna be here till 4 a.m. if we win. So that's what happened. I sat there till 4 a.m. till I won. So that's good. It is nice to at least get a win under my belt, even if it isn't, some, if, even if it isn't something kind of silly like a satellite, because satellite structures are quite silly. Um, actually, right at the very end, we were down to seven people and six were getting a seat. Seventh got nothing. So what we did is I, I had the chip lead by a decent amount. I didn't want to give up anything because I got out my computer like a internet nerd <laughs> and typed in all the numbers and saw that my equity was like 25,100, which is pretty good. It means you shouldn't give up anything if your equity, if the seat is 25,500, right? So we, what we ended up happening is we all put a little bit of money to the seventh place person, which is fine with me. I would never do this in a regular tournament because you want the bubble to go on forever, but in a satellite, you actually do not mind locking it up. And gosh, how, how bad would it be if I ended up taking seventh place and got nothing? But so I put in 500, the short stack put in 2,000, everybody else put in 1,000. And it's probably okay. I'm probably spewing a little bit of equity, but that's acceptable. Um, an interesting spot came up though. As soon as we got, as soon as we got the deal in place, folds around the small blind who had about eight big blinds. He shoved into the big blind who had about 10 big blinds. Um, big blind called with ace king, small blind had king nine, and that was it. And at the end, one of the other good players there asked me what I thought about the call with Ace King. He thought it was probably an easy fold. And I probably, I just kind of assumed it would be an easy call given we just altered the payout structure, right? In a regular satellite structure, it would be an easy fold. There was one player with about four big blinds. Um, I had about 25 big blinds. Everyone else had between eight and 15 big blinds. And one guy had four big blinds to set it up a little bit. So um, I ran the numbers and sure enough, Ace King is always a fold no matter what your opponent's doing. If your opponent's shoving any two cards, Ace-King's still a fold there, even with the altered payout structure that we just implemented. So that was kind of surprising to me. I assumed it would probably be like a slightly profitable call under most scenarios. And even if your opponent's shoving any two cards, which he should, <laughs> interestingly enough, um, you still should only call with aces, kings, and queens in like the m most reasonable, favorable stack position that I was looking at. And if the stacks were even, like say both players had eight big blinds, it's actually, you should only call it aces, so. Satellites are fun because of exactly that. Is that what people want to do? They want to sit there and blind out all night. No, I don't want to sit there and blind out all night. So anyway, enough on that. I'm gonna go play the $25,000 tournament now. I'm glad I did not have to put in much of the buy-in because whenever you buy in for a satellite, it's not like you win your whole seat because you had to buy in for 2200. 22, how much did I put in? 2500. So that's that. The trip will at least not be so terrible unless I figure out a way to bust and re-enter. And then tomorrow, if there's a 10K turbo, I could bust and re-enter that. That would make the trip poor. But let's just win the tournament instead. Well, I'm back in my room already. I played for about 45 minutes. I'm laying on the bed, if you cannot tell. Um, played for about 45 minutes, and then I made a full house against quads, so I lost. It's kind of an interesting spot. So Nick Petrangelo, very good, loose aggressive player, raised from the cutoff to 2,000 out of our 100,000 stack. I call the big blind with ace line offsuit, it comes 9-5-5. Five, five. Pretty good spot. Spoiler alert, he has fives. 
Um, I checked, he bet 1,500, which you will see the kids do quite often. And I check raised 4,000. This is a spot where quite often protecting your equity is very relevant. It's pretty hard for your opponent to have a five. I could have lots of fives. I'd like to check raise some draws. And if my opponent does call, I have effectively protected my hand against queen jack and whatnot. It also made it harder for my opponent to block. So I made it 4,000. He made it 10,400. At this point, I'm not really loving my spot anymore, but he's very, very loose aggressive and loves to battle. And we've played a little bit in the past, so I don't really see how I can fold. So I called, turns an ace, which is a pretty good card, because if he did have an overpair, he clearly loses now. And if he had something like ace something with a backdoor flush draw, well, now he turned top pair and he's going to like that. If he has a five, though, I'm still just screwed. So I checked, he bet 22,000 into about a 26,000 pot, so a pretty big bet. Um, it's a little bit unnerving because he can set up a river shove. But I decided to call. River was another nine, so I'm pretty happy at this point. I lose to exactly quads and aces, and I block the aces. So I decided to lead. I don't know if I like the lead. The problem here is that he should have almost no bluffs, and if he has a five, he's probably going to check if I, if I check. So... If he does have a bluff like h7, is he actually gonna fire again on the river? Maybe, like maybe he's gonna try to make me fold a five, but that seems pretty optimistic. So, um, also backdoor flush draw turned and it came in on the river. Not that that really matters, I don't think. It matters a little bit, but not a ton. Um, so I decided to leave for 30,000 into the um, 75,000 pot and he put me in for another 30,000 on top or 35,000 on top. And I don't really see how I can fold. Maybe I'm supposed to fold for 30,000. God, that would be such a miserable spot. I paid, he had quads. It's actually kind of unfortunate. I was playing with Mike Leah, who I played with a year ago in the same tournament, and I made three of a kind against his three of a kind. Or no, what did I have? Maybe I had ace eight against his boat. Or maybe I had eight seven against his ace eight. I don't know what I had. Anyway, the board came like eight, eight, three, and I had an eight and I lost. So, uh, good hands have not fared well for me in this exact tournament. I may or may not play again. The field did not look particularly good. Like, my table was all good kids and one amateur player who was, like, fine, right? Like, not a bad amateur. So I may go take a look at the field in about two hours or so and see what it looks like. They actually start you with only, uh, I say only, 120 big blinds. So it's not a particularly deep stack tournament, and the blinds are 40 minutes, 40 minute levels. So it's a little bit turbo -y, but the rake is almost none. So we play an almost no rake tournament that's kind of turbo -y, and I guess I would. Ah. <sighs> So frustrating when stuff happens. And in, in these spots, a lot of people think, oh man, could you have played it differently? You gotta realize though, we're not really trying to play it differently such that we don't play a big pot with the third nuts, right? I want to play big pots with the third nuts. And um, sometimes you just lose. Obviously I could have just check call the flop. When deep stack though, I think check raising is just better. But check call is fine. Then on the turn, I would probably check call. Then on the river, I would check raise. He would jam, and I would call. <laughs> so I'm losing this. Um, I'm losing this hand no matter what, and that's that's a okay. You start with 100 something big blinds. When you make a good boat, you're going broke. So I'm either going to play the tournament tomorrow, 10,000 turbo. Maybe I won't even play it tomorrow. I'll actually take a look at that one too because it looks tough. Like if it looks like the 25k feel when I bust it, I probably just wouldn't play it. But um, I'm probably gonna find my way in this 25k. <laughs> Well, the 25k did not go well. I lost. When I bought in for the second time, I actually got down to 30,000 right off the bat. I had top pair against a flush draw that lost for about two thirds of my chips. From there though, I rallied. I stole a few pots, then I won a flip. Then I got moved to a new table and I won with pocket nines against pocket threes. That was lucky. And then, I got up to about 400,000 chips, which was four starting stacks, uh, probably two times average stack. But from there, we had just ended the rebuy period. There were about four people at my table with 15 big blind stacks. And I doubled up one guy twice and another guy once. All just standard all in pre-flops. And that was kind of rough. Then I was down to about 25 big blinds. Mike Leo raised, he'd been quite aggressive. Um, 
Matt Glance called. I shoved Queen Jack offsuit, which I think is fine, from the button. Mike Leo was in the hijack seat, I think. Mike Glance was in the cutoff, or maybe the, yeah, I guess. I don't know, something like that. Um, reasonably early positions. And I think my shove's fine for 25 big blinds. That's the only other option is to fold. Guy in the small blind woke up with pocket kings. Then Mike Leo woke up with, or with ace king, and ace king won. So Mike Leo had all the chips on my left. He um, was winning every all-in. I did the opposite. I lost every all-in. It's kind of frustrating. I'm actually watching Poker After Dark. Here it is. If you have not signed up for Poker Go, definitely do it. Use code LITTLE to get $10 off of a year subscription. You might as well sign up for a year. They have some great shows right now. I just watched Tom Dwan get it all in with aces against Antonio's Kings for about 400 big blinds. And um, the aces won. It's going to sound bad. <laughs> it's always good to see other people getting cooler because I feel like that's just what's been happening to me all week. So anyway, tomorrow's a $10,000 turbo tournament. I don't know if it's going to be good or terrible because the final table's not streamed. Although... I don't think that matters so much for the higher buying events. Like, people who are here who play the 25k, presumably they're all going to play the 10k. Maybe they will, maybe they won't. If I go down there tomorrow and there are 15 people playing and it looks like a tough tournament, I'll just skip it. If I go down there and it's the same as today, I will definitely play. So, that's the plan. It's been a pretty rough trip. I have no caches. Well, I guess I want a satellite seat, so that's something. And, um... I really didn't get a whole lot going. I mean, I guess I got four starting sacks in the 25k. That is $100,000 worth of equity. I had $100,000 worth of equity about an hour ago. Now I have none. Oh, tournaments are fun. After this, what's next for me? I am going to probably go to Borgata in September. And in October, I'm going to be going to the Stones Casino in Sacramento to commentate the final table of their big series. So I'll make sure to tweet about that on Twitter. At Jonathan Little. But I'm going to go home and take it easy. I miss my son. I miss my wife. And um, I'm going to go lick my wounds. So let's go do that. <laughs>